I don't know that I knew it then in the moment when I was learning new things, but I know now that that kind of story is the epitome of white privilege. Hey, hey, this is Elemental Choice. I'm an artist based out of North Carolina, and this week we are gonna talk about art and allyship. Last episode, I talked about the top three things that contribute to my artistic identity. If you haven't seen that video, go back and check it out. Subsequently, allyship is a really important topic for me because so much of my creative fuel comes from cultures and communities that are not my own. As a cis, white, able-bodied female, I owe it to the communities that I participate in to thank them for their contribution to my inspiration as well as stand by their side. I grew up in a small town that was majoritively white. The KKK were considered a thing of the past even though they did have residents in that area at one point in time. I would have considered my parents pretty open-minded. I was taught to teach everyone with respect, no matter who they were or their social and economic status. And so at that point, if you would have asked me, I would have never thought myself to be part of the problem. A hundred percent my family. We never talked about race. I was definitely raised to not see color. And that's something I didn't even realize was a problem until my 20s. I got super lucky after going to college. I was surrounded by people from different communities, different cultures, different ethnicities. And I'm grateful for those people that called me friends, that ended up as adopted family. They fed me, they took me in, they shared their stories, they shared their fears. And I had the opportunity to listen and learn from their experiences about a piece of the world that I never knew existed. Looking back, I realized that that is a fundamental trait of having white privilege. Wait, 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 wait. Don't go anywhere. Take a deep breath. The people who are white, please come. Let's be uncomfortable together. I know we're getting nervous, but we can talk about this. White privilege. So many people in my white community extremely defensive about this verbiage. It's okay that it makes you uncomfortable, but we gotta sit in being uncomfortable for a hot second and dissect what this really means and how it affects how we interact with the rest of the world. I consider myself to be a pretty eco-conscious individual. So if I go to the grocery store and I just have a couple of items, I'll go through self-checkout. And if I just have a few things, I won't grab a bag. I'll just grab my things and the receipt and then head out and leave the grocery store. I had a friend of mine tell me how anxious it made him every time I would do that when we were together. Until he said something, it wasn't even something that I thought about. I just figured that if there was any issue with me leaving the store, I would merely just show them the receipt, they would double check it with my items, and no problem, I would be out the door. But this one comment revealed such a large truth about my perspective of security and cops and authority and how much I valued and trusted someone giving me the benefit of the doubt. My privilege was having the luxury to not even think twice about something that other communities spend a lot of intellectual and emotional bandwidth on just to function in the daily world. But it can't be every other culture's responsibility to teach white people about our white privilege and about these systems that our ancestors put in place that still negatively affect so many people and so many different cultures that do not look like us. So this is why having these conversations is really important for me. And I am completely aware that even within this video, I'm gonna make a mistake, say something incorrectly that's gonna tick someone off on one side or another. And at this point in my learning, I have to be okay with making mistakes. I'm still learning how to be a better ally. I'm still learning things about systemic racism 
and un biases. What is it? Um, and unconscious biases. And these are things that I'm going to continue to learn to be a better ally for the people that I care about. We need to do our own research and educate ourselves. We need to continue to listen to the communities around us that are disenfranchised. And we need to take action within our own communities to justify and correct the errors that have been made. There's so much more to learn and so much more to do, but I hope that by sharing my story, you now are a little more comfortable with being uncomfortable understanding that being an ally is about being wrong, making mistakes, and unlearning a lot of things that we had blinders to for the majority of our lives. And I just want to say that at any point in time in my life when I was too ignorant to understand, I'm sorry for anything that I said and any actions that I've taken. But just a verbal apology doesn't make things right, so let's get back to the work we're going to do. I hope that in our white communities we can continue to have progressive conversations on how we as a community can make things better for those that we have consciously or unconsciously disenfranchised in the creation of the world we live in. If you have questions on how to be a better ally within your community, or you have comments about things that I did not mention, please leave a comment below. As always, please like, subscribe, and share if you like this video. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and we'll see you next time.